Shalom, Israel. Kahala, Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh, Shai, Barakatha. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High in the name of His Son, Yahweh, Shai, who the world ignorantly really calls Jesus Christ. And we want to say greetings to the blacks, Hispanics, so called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and the 12 tribes of Israel who are scattered to the four corners of the globe. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, my name is Yachanan Maccabeus. My name is Abiyah the Messenger. Shalom, this is Mikael. This is Shafar. And today's lesson is man up and take care of your responsibilities. Huh. And we're going to go through this Bible today with this lesson. We're going to show you men that you should be manning up and taking responsibility in your community, your family, your women, and being a protector of them. Of a righteous woman so that you can have a righteous family. 
And um, as always, we'd like to start out with the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. This is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And we're going to give you the truth of this Bible. So you get the proper understanding and know your responsibility as a, as a Hebrew Israelite man. The responsibility of your people in your community. Your responsibility to be a husband to your wife. Your responsibility in general of being a man of the Lord. Uh, from there, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 10. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And as you know by now, we're going to go through this Bible, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. We're going to go a little bit in the Old, we're going to go a little bit in the Apocrypha, and we're going to go a little bit in the, old, in the New Testament, and we're going to bring it all together and give you your responsibilities as a Hebrew Israelite man to your community, to your women, and how to serve the Most High God. From there, we're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 21. Or 33. 33, excuse me, Slakia. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 33. And it reads, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. All right, verse 40. Verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Constant, we go by the order that the Most High laid for us, then um, it's going to be um, orderly, but we go against the way the order that the Most High laid out for us is, is confusion. Come. So we're going to go step by step and um, show that the order that the Most High gave for the Hebrews light um, household. This is our knowledge and wisdom following the order that the Most High gave us. Come. From there, we're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 and it reads, But I will have you know that the head of every man is Jehovah Shah, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Jehovah Shah is Jehovah. Because that's the hierarchy of the family that the Most High gave us, where it's um, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, man, and then woman. So Yahweh Shah has to answer to uh, Yahweh. And man has to answer to be accountable to Yahweh Shai, and the woman has to be held accountable and answer to her man. That's the order that the Most High gave us. Come. So if you're going opposite or contrary to that order, then um, your, your head is Satan, where the woman bleaches the head above the man, then that means her head is Satan out of the Most High. Come. From there, we're going to go to the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16. The book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16. And it reads, And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So where we're going wrong in society right now is we living as men and we being whoremongers. Not only that, but we, we, enticing whores and we uh, allowing our women and promoting our women uh, to conduct themselves as whores and we going out we land with everything uh, as my uncle over here likes to say we pumping and dumping uh, you know what uh, I mean so what we should be doing is if we entice a woman and we lie with her we should surely be taking her to be a wife and, and that's a big responsibility that's, that's going wrong in our communities, we not manning up and making wives. We not manning up and, and, and taking a woman in, in a marriage. Black black wives matter, you know? Straight like that. The Hispanic wives matter. That's right. And, and without each other, we're going to be compromised. And our enemies is going to seep into our households and make sure that he tears us down as a stronghold. The way that the most high ordained things to be. Yes, yeah, so it was a spiritual man. Uh looking for a wife, you need to um, examine her and see if um, this is someone that you can um, be in a committed relationship with. You just can't um, go to the club and grab the first thing that invites and take her home. That's not how the 
Bosiah uh, wants us to operate, so we need to um, look for someone that we can um, build with. Come. And eventually work towards being in a committed relationship. From there, we're going to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's right. So if you participate in, 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 in these activities, you will be judged for not doing the honorable thing and making a marriage as the most high ordained you to do. See, that's what we're messing up right now. There's no man in the household and we being stupid and we want to be living a life like we pimping. We don't want to do what the Most High told us to do so that we can leave an inheritance to our children because right now we're being foolish and we're, we're renting instead of making uh, marriages so that we can build uh, an empire with each other so that we are able to pass down generational wealth. And that's what we need to be able to do to establish so that we leave something behind for our children as men so that we can show them uh, what is correct and exact to do. We need to be able to show our children how to treat women. We need to be there to show our, our little girls how a man is supposed to treat a wife. And if we're not in the household, we're skipping all over these things. And I also want to put this out from our brothers too, that um, when the Bible says marriage is on, but we're not um, telling you to go to the white man to get a marriage certificate. Cause that, can, that can ruin you, because um, marriage certificates puts the man under subjection to the woman. Where the woman um, wants to leave and go somewhere else, she can take half of your stuff. So don't do that. But marriage is being a committed relationship um, with the woman and building with her. Slock you. And on top of that, if, if you uh, living with a woman and y'all not working to build a house and you living under Section 8, you're still under subjecting to a woman. Because not only is, is you under subjected to that woman, but she's under subjection to Esau, but she's giving her all these Section 8 benefits that you're living under. Instead of taking the helm and leaving the house so that you can come up out of that status. Carl, you can't be the man of your house if you're living under <clears> a woman's wood roof because she can um, kick your butt out and throw you on the streets anytime she wants to. Come. So you have to uh -huh. bow down and submit to her to uh, keep a roof over your head so you can't be a man uh, and cop in that situation. From there, we're going to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 21 through 25. The book of Ephesians, chapter 21 through 25. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. And Slaka, we just read that in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, that the man is the head of the woman. Come. And also interesting when we look at Genesis 3, 16, which um, every man should have memorized, that that was one of the first commands that the Most High gave to the woman, that um, you desire to be to your, towards your husband and he should rule over you. So the Bible constantly uh, states this order over and over again. Come, read. Verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In just a few things. In everything. Everything. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, just toss to the side and treat it like any old hole on the street. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. No, just pump and dump and then move on to the next one. <laughs> Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So you're supposed to, be a, you're supposed to want to lay down your life uh, for a righteous woman out of our community. You're supposed to want to give your life for like Christ gave his life for the church. And that's when we're going astray. We even listen to this. We don't listen to the music that they taught you. We don't love these hoes, and we done became fools. 
If we, we didn't decide what we're going to do the worldly things. Well, read that again, 25. Verse 25, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So you got to show your wife that action and be willing to give yourself for your wife. You got to be willing to lay down your life for, for her and your children. You can't just make babies and just keep moving it along. You're supposed to love your wife and children like, love, like, like Christ loved the church. And also, um, definition of wife according to the Bible is um, a helpmate, someone that is um, obedient to her husband, someone that um, has the mind of her husband to um, execute um, and carry out the duties of household as her husband wills. So everybody's not a wife either. So a wife is a faithful woman as a subject to her subjection to her husband. Come. From there, we're gonna go to the book of Sirach. <clears throat> <Slap it. clears throat> to the book of Sirach, chapter seven, verse twenty-six. The book of Sirach, chapter seven, verse twenty-six. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. But give not thyself over to a light woman. So if you have a faithful um, wife that um, is there for you, that keeps it a hundred percent for you, you can't cast her away. You can't um, get rid of her so you can, um, you can move on to the next um, pretty hot thing that catches your eye. Now you got to hold on to her. Or if you get rid of her, then you're an adulterer, then putting her away because of, of your wickedness. Some of y'all are so stupid, y'all got the good woman at home. And y'all want some Cardi B and Nicki Minaj type jump off for the night. Y'all rather have that because she doing all the pumping and sweating and topping you off and doing all type of dumb, ridiculous stuff that you rather give up your good wife at home with the family. That's foolishness. Yeah, that's wicked. That's selfish. That's even not only selfish uh, to the wife, but that's selfish to your children. Yes, they gonna put away your good wife for a light woman because, um, she has a big behind or a big chest, whatever, but uh but ain't got no, empty on the inside. Slot you. But ain't got no brain. She got doodle wood in between her ears. Come. Yes, to be aware of the light woman. The light woman is someone that um won't be submissive to you or subjected to you that um has their own agenda instead of carrying out your agenda. Come. A light woman can cause you headaches, it can um, ruin your life. So try to avoid um and unfortunately there's a lot of like women's societies, you gotta be careful dealing with women. You gotta properly examine them, examine their minds I'm talking about, to see where they're at them spiritually and mentally, to see if they're worthy to um, take on as a wife. Come. From there, we're gonna go to 1 Timothy, chapter one, verse eight through 11. This is 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Wait, wait, what is that? But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. So why does Christianity say that the law was bad and is done away with? When the scriptures, Paul in his own words, said the law was good. That's right. That shows the contradiction, the contradictions that the church of Christianity teaches. That's right. Read. Verse 9, <clears throat> knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and the sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers and manslayers. Okay. Verse 10, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for man-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So the law of the mankind needs um, the, the law of statute commandments because uh, we're all guilty of committing sin in um, one way or the other. And without um, 
the knowledge, without the law, we wouldn't know the knowledge of sin then. So we, so we need the law, statute, commandments to keep us in order. Come. And the law tells us um, how to deal in relationships with each other to keep us from being whoremongers. So you need the scriptures. Verse 11, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Huh. From there, we're going to go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. And it reads, but if any man provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So if, if you don't provide for your house, you're worse than a non-believer because the infidel is a non-believer. Nah. You gotta be willing to take care of those of your own homes. That means those that pass through your lords. And not only them, but those of the house and those that are in your community as well. Because your children are gonna be there and it, your children are gonna bring, bring around friends. And some of their fathers is not going to be there. So you got to even be able to show them how a father is. You got to show your children uh, how to be there for their children when they grow up. Condom, nation building starts, starts at home. Con. With your, with your own family. Con, and you got to be there to provide that influence. Child support is just not money. You got to be there to support them through sports activities and group activities and moral support. And provide the provide for them spiritually also by teaching them these law section commandments. That's right. From there, we're going to go to the book of Sirach, chapter 7, verse 15. All right, I got it. Sirach, chapter 7, verse 15. Bring it up. Hate not laborous work, neither husbandry, which the Most High hath ordained. That's right. So, so a real man, a guy, he ain't afraid to get his hands dirty. Come it says, if a man don't work, then he don't eat. And it's better to be dead to the live a beggar's life. So you can't be scared to get your hands dirty. You can't be scared to make no marriage. Your hands supposed to get dirty so your wife can have some nice clean nails. Instead of some of y'all sitting at home playing PlayStation all day and letting the woman go to work. Y'all living the life of a baby man. Con, yeah, real man's supposed to make his own money, not a... Um depend on this woman, much of much off his woman. That's not um, what the Bible says. Come on, go throw some dirt on yourself. You, you're not a man actually at all if you um, laid up and dependent on a woman. You're just a male, not a man. Got in the field to get cussed out by Esau for a day. From there, we're gonna go to the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 22. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse, 20, verse 22. Salakia. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 22. Bring it up. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. Come on. Yes, a woman shouldn't be happy to take care of a husband. Um, the husband's supposed to be her head, not not her child. Come. So of course she's gonna be mad and frustrated because she's operating outside of her order that the Most High had ordained. Come. And some of y'all fools, why would you even want some woman to rule over top of you? You're a feminine. That, that's a feminine, Zach. You're straight a feminine. You're supposed to go and have your own. Should I, I'm from out in the sticks. I've worked since I was 13. What type of man are you to let a woman do that for you? Let me bring out um, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to show what the Most High thinks about effeminate men. Bring that out. That's oh, yeah, bring that out. Um, trait. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, no revelers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the Most High. So there's no room in the kingdom for your sorry, lazy, um, but if you don't want to work in them, man up and take care of your responsibilities. Can you repeat the scripture for him one more again? This is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
verse 9 to 11. Or verse 9 to um, 10. From there, we're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, 15 to 16. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 15 to 16. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 15. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers, she was hated. So this is the scenario, so a man has two wives, one that he hated, and why would he hate one wife? Because she's probably wicked and um, not being subjected to him. And he has another wife which he likes better than the first wife, but he has kids um, with the wife that he hated. The Bible says, it's going to tell us if the man has to take care of the kid with the wife that he hates or not. Let's see what it says. Verse 16, that it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed firstborn. So he has to, um, with the son that he hated, if, I mean with the wife that he hated, if he has the firstborn of him, then he still has to give him the cream of the inheritance still, because he's the firstborn son. That's right, so if you're out there, and you've been out in the world, and you've made a baby, by another woman and you done made babies with the new woman that you with, you still got to take care of your other children. We shouldn't even have to tell you that. This is basic milk scriptures. Come. You shouldn't even be a fool. I mean, because the child, I mean, common sense say that the child then has to be here. So you still got to provide even though uh, the mom might have did you wrong or something. Some of y'all being so foolish, y'all want to lay with another man's wife. But I'm going to bring this scripture out for you. Wait, wait, no, let's finish this out. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. He finished out verse 17. Oh. Verse 17. Right. Mm -hmm. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength, and the right of the firstborn is his. All right, so that's, that's the law according to the Bible. So um, you still got to give that firstborn a double portion because he's the beginning of your strength. And also deal with um, having um, babies by um, multiple women. Don't bite off more than you can choose. Don't be no um, Stevie uh. J there. Stevie J um, having babies with hundreds of women knowing he can't take care of none of them. That's wicked as hell doing. So man can't have multiple wives according to the Bible, but um, you have a responsibility to um, take care of them deal with them fairly, so don't be no Stevie J. From there we're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 22. Because like I said, some of y'all, y'all want to be fools, y'all want to lay with the next man's wife. Come. So we're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, 22 to 24. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. Verse 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, verse 24, then ye shall bring them both out of unto the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. 
So, if you lay with another man's uh, wife, that's something that's punishable by death. But right now, you're under the grace where you can repent of this right now. Come. And you shouldn't even be one to defy your neighbor like that. All you're doing is making an enemy amongst your brethren. Why would you want to lay with the next man's wife? But see, we trapped up in foolishness and folly. That's why we got to repent, Israel. It's high time. And it's probably a lot of brothers that um, gone to prison, you know, um, fighting or killing each other for um, sleeping with each other's women. So you definitely um, destroy um, families and households um, participating in that wicked act. Come. From there, we're going to go to the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 1. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 1. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and man. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. Verse 2. But well, that's what we want so well. Um... That's how you build a strong community in our nation. By these three things, which is the unity of brother. You know, brethren getting along under the banner of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Uh. The love of neighbors, where we uh, love and respect each other according to the law, statute, and commandments. Uh. And a man and a wife that agree together. Those are the three principles to uh, building a strong nation. Uh. That's right. And that's definitely missing in the so called black and so called Hispanic community. Uh, we definitely shouldn't be laying with the next man's wives. We should be trying to find a woman that's on the same accord. Not some old dookie brain woman out there trying to get high and turn up all the time. A woman that wants the same things that you, that wants to be led by a man that's led by Christ, you know, so that they can guide the house, so they can guide the children, so they can be on the correct path and walk your children down the right path of agreement. So that y'all can raise uh, daughters that that are not whores. Uh, See so y'all can raise uh, young men that's not whoremongers and not thuggies. You understand that? It's high time, y'all. It's time to come up out of this simplicity. It's time for the black man to love the black woman. And yeah, yeah, we getting on the black man today. Don't worry, we're gonna come back with one for the sister too. But we getting on the black man and Hispanic man today. So it's time for y'all to wake up, y'all. Any, any of y'all brothers got something y'all like to add? A scripture or anything? Yeah, like Akana said, we need to we need to love our neighbors as we love ourselves and um, build with our sisters of our own nation. They'll be going to the other nations uh, looking for wives because the grass is always greener in the other nations. Come on, let me pull out a scripture. I do got a scripture now that you brought that up. Yeah, because a black man needs a black woman. A Hispanic man needs a Hispanic woman. 12 tribes of Israel. We need each other. That's right. The book of Sirah, chapter 26, verse 19 through 21. The book of Sirah, chapter 26, verse 19 through 21. My son, keep the flower of thy age, Sam. And give not thy strength to strangers. Wait, give your strength to strangers? Give not thy strength to strangers. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, sow it with thine own seed, trusting in the goodness of thy stock. So thy race, which thou leavest, shall be magnified. That's right. Having the confidence of their good descent. That's right. So we need to make marriages amongst our communities. So that <laughs> with righteous women, men of Israel, so that our seed can be of good descent. So that we can pass down the good nature to our children. So that they can be taught by a woman that we lead these values. And also you see like a lot of our celebrities that um, deal with um, white women like um, Don Cornelius, the king of um, Soul Train. When he died, he left his fortune and legacy to a white woman. So a white woman um, owns a fortune and leg wealth that he built um, with Soul Train. Or Michael Jackson, when the king of pop, when he died, he left his um, fortune and inheritance to us, the white kids. So that's why it's important to um, 
build with each other so we leave our heritage and fortune um, with our own people, with our own kind. Come. Come. That was a good lesson. <coughs> so anybody else got anything they want to add so far today? Uh, we'd like to say um, once again, Ka Halal Yahweh Ba Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh We want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son Yahweh Shai. We want to say greetings to the 12 tribes of Israel who were scattered to the four corners of the earth. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And, um, we want to give a shout out to Brother Uriel, Sister Natora Lacan. Shalom. We want to give a shout out to uh, Elder Jedi Malik, Elder Harag. Um, we want to give a shout out to Brother uh, Yazar Adara, Brother Uriel, um, Brother Rod Warch Mill, uh, Brother, brother uh, Azariah should be Israel. Come. We miss you, brother. Hope you get up pretty soon. Uh, brother Hosai Kanai. Um, brother Ahazia. General Hazia, Shabbat Shalom. Um, Mac News 144, uh, King Ephraim, thanks for showing the love as always. We appreciate that. Um, Yakim. Brother Yakim, we wish he was here. Thank you for the feast last night. We really, really all enjoyed praise. it. All praises. Uh. Um, Brother Alizar, watching at home. If you watch it, Shalom. Shalom. Sister Kim, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, and anybody that we forgetting, you know, Shabbat Shalom. Ask Shabbat. And may the most high bless y'all uh, during the week to come and protect y'all from our enemies and any plot that they have and may he watch over your children. We're gonna give them the Instagram plug in too. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram now at Rise of the Chosen. Um, all all together, no capitals, anything like that. Just Instagram.com backslash or forward slash rise of the chosen or at rise of the rise of the chosen. All put together. Oh yeah, and shout out to all the YouTube family, and we'd appreciate it if y'all could share uh, the YouTube channel on social media. You know, we're doing good on Facebook, but we'd like y'all to share uh, our YouTube channel, you know, help us get some likes and share the page, get us some views. Sometimes there'll be some content on there that's not the same kind of content on Facebook, and it will help us edify the people. So we'd appreciate y'all if y'all help us share the YouTube channel. So YouTube family, thank y'all for the love as well. That's right. Come. And with that, we say shalom. 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 Kuu Yashirala. Kuu Yashirala. Kuu Yashirala. Kuu Yashirala. Kuu Yashirala. Kuu Yashirala. Come on. Kung Yashirala! 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 Kung Yashirala!